Our first guest tonight to discuss the explosive report on the FBI investigation into Russia collusion, the agency appearing to violate its own rules when using informants before a formal investigation was ever launched. Joining us here tonight, John Solomon, opinion contributor for The Hill. It is great to have you with us, uh, John. The FBI really? violating its own rules, uh, you know, it is a new context. It is a new offense, but it's apparently uh, a, a long list of offenses uh, just waiting to be explored here. Well, you know, the Bureau has had a, a great history of solving a lot of great crimes. It's all, also had a history of, uh, of some black eyes at, at different times in our country. I think this is one of the, I have some breaking news for you, though, tonight, Lou. Just before I walked in here, I just found out that the intelligence chief, the counterintelligence chief for the FBI, Bill Priestap, right. is going to be on Capitol Hill tomorrow for the first time to answer questions about both the Hillary Clinton email case, he oversaw that, and the Russia Trump case, which he also oversaw. He was Peter Strzok's boss, so he was the guy that uh, oversaw the guy with all the text messages. And I think tomorrow's going to be a pivotal day. I think Congress is going to learn a lot of new information tomorrow during these interviews. And the implication that you're making, it seems, or at least the inference I'm drawing, uh, is that he is going to be uh, speaking uh, uh, candidly about his uh, his employer, the FBI, and those who were running the agency during that period. Yeah, and he was one of them. He was an assistant director, an assistant, an assistant director for counterintelligence. So he's very high up, had all a bird's eye view of everything that went on in both of these investigations. Even questions like James Comey, right. uh, did anyone in the FBI know he was sharing classified memos with his lawyers? Those are the sort of things that are going to get asked tomorrow. Uh, sharing classified memos with his lawyers, uh, a special uh, em employment uh, relationship with one of them at least. Right. Uh, it's uh, the FBI. Let me ask you as we continue this uh, sure. discussion do you believe that the FBI will soon recover uh, from this? You referred to a black eye that seems somewhat uh, to me uh, diminished and uh, less profound than perhaps the damage uh, that I see in that agency. Yeah, listen, they recovered from 9-11. If you remember, I did a lot of the reporting 15, 16 years ago about what right. the FBI knew and dropped the ball before the worst terrorist attack in American history. They'll come back. There's lots of good people there that care, including people that have talked to me about the concerns they have in the Russia case. And it will come back. It'll come back stronger. But right now, there's still a lot of accounting. We don't even know the nature of the black guy yet. We're still learning. Right. We know that there was some actions by these informants before there was a formal investigation. We don't know whether they were controlled or not. So until we get all the facts in place, I don't think the FBI can, one, address what it did wrong and try to correct what it did wrong until we know everything on the table. Transparency has always been one of the Bureau's toughest issues. And uh, talking about the, the, the problems of their own making, the corruption within the leadership itself, we learn now the Department of Justice Inspector General report has been deferred another week. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Judiciary Committee, Senate Judiciary Committee, putting off that hearing. Uh, and this goes on and on. It is yeah. one form of slow walking. Let's be very clear. Yeah. This, if this agency has not learned how to produce a report after a thorough investigation in under a year, there's something terribly, terribly wrong that permeates the entire agency, in my opinion, yours. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the IG did its work, right? And it's been sitting in this review process. Right. And every week we hear it's coming out and then it gets kicked down the road. Not uncommon when there's a lot of classified information. People are going to be arguing over what can be released publicly, what needs to remain redacted. Uh, but I do expect that it's going to come out. I know it's more than 400 pages. That means there's wow. a lot to talk about James Comey if there's 400 pages in that report. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, speaking of slow walking, the, I mean, it's... Uh, the expression is synonymous with Rod Rosenstein uh, and the leaders at the Department of Justice. Uh, we don't even mention Jeff Sessions' name anymore because he's not even a titular head. Uh, he is, uh, he is a specter in the halls case. of justice. Uh, yeah. Your thoughts about Rosenstein and the ways in which uh, Congress can once again assert its uh, oversight responsibilities, uh, and they are responsibilities laid out uh, in the authorities of the Constitution, but they are fundamentally responsibilities. Yeah, listen, I talk to a lot of people in the Justice Department, even people that like Rod Rosenstein, and here's one thing they say. He's clearly a witness. If, if Bob Mueller is investigating obstruction, the president uh, firing Comey, even though he had the right to do so, if he's investigating that, Rod Rosenstein wrote the memo. He has to be a witness. How could a witness with a conflict of interest still be in charge of the investigation? That's one of the issues I, when I talk to my sources in the Bureau, mm -hmm. comes up all the time. And, and let me ask you this as we wrap up here, because sure. you and I have not talked about this. I'd like to get a sense from you. 
What would happen if Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan uh, and others in the Republican Party stood up and said to the special counsel and to the country, this is over. This special counsel is done. Uh, almost a year investigation by the FBI of uh, a, the ghost-like uh, suggestion of collusion on the part of this administration, when everything that has been turned up in the investigation by first the FBI, then the special counsel investigation for more than a year now that has supplanted that, and for whom uh, the, uh, the, the FBI investigation was a foundation, nothing has been turned up that, that suggests anything but democratic collusion, democratic mm. crimes, crimes mm. of corruption within the leadership of the FBI and the Justice Department. Not a yeah. single, single mention of President Trump. We're in the 500th day of President Trump's presidency, and there's still not a public piece right. of evidence that says there was collusion. I think something important is going to happen soon. I think when this IG report comes out, if it lays out the wrongdoing or mistakes that James Comey made at the FBI, it's going to affirm the president and, quite frankly, Rod Rosenstein's memo, the decision to fire Comey. And that's going to make it look a lot less like obstruction and much more like a personnel performance issue. And I think that's going to be something that changes the dialogue. I'd keep an eye on that. I think this thing is actually winding down on, on some fronts. You look at the pr questions that the president's lawyers were given, not a single one about collusion with Russia. Right. That's a sign that Bob Mueller doesn't think there's much there. Well, I, in that, uh, Bob Mueller joins, the, uh, the, I believe, the vast majority of Americans at this point. Uh, John, we thank you for being with us as always. Thank you very Thanks, much. Luke. Hillary Clinton violated the Espionage Act, and perhaps the president violated the Espionage Act by using that server. Now, it's hunting for the right words to get it, but it's that simple. And once you open that door, and I believe Susan Rice is the key to the start of opening that door, then everything's going to become very transparent of how they use the intelligence community for political purposes. Yeah, you got Hillary Clinton has violated the Espionage Act. But this is very serious. If you violate the Espionage Act, it's a minimum of 10 years in jail. Yeah. And, the, and Secretary Clinton should be tried for that. This is big as big and dangerous as Watergate. It yes. is. It is because an administration that left, left trap doors that was endangering the United States and our national security. Those are treasonous acts. That's why this can be as big or bigger than Watergate. The abuses at the Obama Justice Department and FBI in front of the FISA court go to the bone of the function of the Justice Department. And the key to this, the key to the lying and the misrepresentations to the FISA court is going to be John Brennan, James Clapper, James Comey, and the senior officials at the Justice Department. When there is a federal grand jury, uh, in, in addition to the Nunes Committee investigation into the State Department, uh, people will be forced by subpoena to give testimony, a senior Department of State officials who are currently there or who have left. I think it will be demonstrated that they colluded with Clinton administration uh, representatives and campaign officials and people like Sidney Blumenthal and Cody Shearer who passed on uh, completely unreliable information which they hoped would be passed along to the FBI, and in fact it was, and that information was used fraudulently to obtain FISA warrants. This is why, Lou, the only way to get these answers, once the Nunes Committee is done, is to have a federal grand jury force all of these State Department people, CIA, DNI people, FBI, DOJ senior people, under oath, in a grand jury. It's the only way we're ever going to get the full story. And to add another twist, Lou, Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, is a witness. He should be recused from this altogether because he's going to have to testify why he signed a FISA application. Comey and Strzok and all of those people, including senior Justice Department officials, this was a plot, a brazen plot, to exonerate Hillary Clinton in the email server case to make to to ensure that she became president and if by chance she lost part of the plot was to frame Donald Trump 
with a false crime. And that's why the Steele dossier was used. It was designed to create a false narrative about Trump and his people and to be used ultimately against them if Hillary Clinton lost. This is why this is the single most important scandal of the last 50 years, because senior DOJ and FBI officials engaged in conduct that was designed to corrupt an American presidential election. It wasn't the Russians who corrupted the presidential election. It was the American officials at the Department of Justice and the FBI. I think we have ample facts revealed to us during this last year and a half that high-ranking people throughout the government, not just the FBI, high-ranking people had a plot to not have Hillary Clinton, you know, uh, indicted so that she could remain the flawed candidate that she was, which in my view is stupidity. And, uh, and they also had, a, and, and even this Strzok guy talked about this, and they had a backup plan to basically frame Donald Trump. Right. And that's what's been going on. This whole thing, in my view, is just total phony. I mean, how would you feel, someone out there in America land, if somebody was just had a phony scheme about you and went on for months and months and months? Yeah, and, and that's what's going on. Well,